everyone. Welcome to my studio. Hey. <laughs> this is the first time I'm introducing myself. My name is Bella Rachlin. I'm 27 years old and I'm an artist from Israel. In this video I will explain about how I colored this Wonder Woman piece. This was a special piece for Breast Cancer Month, which is this month. And in this piece I used mostly watercolors. So in this video I will explain about the entire process. I will begin with my color choices, how I do the first layers, even the paper type and everything else. So I hope you enjoy this video and feel free to let me know what you think in the comments. Yay! I inked this piece using waterproof pens. I used Copic Multiliners and Touch Pens. The paper type I used for this piece is Canzon Heritage, but I often use Arches paper too. Watercolor type is Windsor Newton, and I also used Finitec Pearl watercolors, given to me by an awesome friend for my last birthday. Brush types are Da Vinci, sizes 2 and 6. I'm starting with skin tones first. Shadows are mixed from pink, purple, and orange. Wonder Woman's main colors are primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. I find this color combination tough, so I focused on complementary colors. I chose purple and yellow. So in every color I used on her, I mixed a bit of purple so the primary colors will have less contrast. Also important to mention, I have a reference picture for her anatomy and shadows. I used a posing up for it. Coloring for me is like building in a way. I do it slowly, layer by layer, to create more and more depth. When one layer is dry, I put another one right over it. I use the watercolors quickly so they will blend well. I think that the main trick of using watercolors is the amount of water that you're choosing to work with. When I want to cover a large area, I use more water with the color. And when I want more precise and darker lines, I use more pigment and less color. I used a lot of water and pigment together for the background. Also, I used the six size brush for the background, while the yellow part behind her head is meant to create the contrast and focus point. When watercolors get dry, they seem a bit less saturated, but I enjoy it. You can build the saturation layer by layer this way. After the first layers are complete, I start to focus on smaller and sharper details. I use more opaque color layers to make the colors pop. For the chains, I used the size 2 brush. Small details require a sharper edge. I add more layers to her face while working fast with the water, so it will blend well with the layers I already did before. Working with the smaller brush on darker details to create crisp, sharp shadow edges. For the clouds in the background, I searched some nice photos to reference real clouds. I used the sharp edge for the cloud and a lot of water to fill it in. 
Now I'm using a smaller brush again for the smaller details. Using light layers to make the clouds fluffy looking and light, so they won't take the focus off her. Using more darker shadows with a small brush, layer by layer. After they got dry, I used the Finetec Pearl watercolors to unify all the layers. When using one wet layer over existing watercolor layers, it makes them blend into each other a little bit. The Finetec colors have a nice shine effect to them, but I'm using them very lightly so the layers underneath will be seen. After the watercolor layers were done, I added colored pencils, Faber-Castell and Caran d'Ache, watercolor based mostly. For the highlights, I used a white gel pen roll. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video.